Welcome to the Like Mugs Podcast. I'm your host, Quincy. And your other host, Justin. So in honor of it being the first day of fall just a couple days ago, we decided to celebrate with some apple cider. Apple cider. Now, I did, uh, I think it was called Alpine. Um, I've done them before. They're actually really good. But I've tried their K-Cups for the first time. It's good, but we had to make really small cups to keep it from getting watered down. Yeah. Like half a mug. And it's a small mug. You already KO'd yours. <laughs> I, I knocked mine out. I like, I like apple cider. Apple cider is great. Um, it mind. does it does taste really good, but and I don't mind making dirty apple cider. You may have to uh, stick with the tea bags that they sell if you want to uh, build like, bigger batches. Yeah, the K cups you gotta do multiple of if you want to get a full cup. Yeah, and I would probably add vodka to mine, but that's another time for another tale. Yeah, I made, I tried two, no, three of these before the episode of the last couple of days, and then this one for the episode, trying to figure out the right measurement, and I had to go to, like. The second smallest setting on my Keurig to be able to do it. Yeah. They say the six ounce, the eight ounce. I think I did the six ounce. The, I tried the eight ounce. It just it still wasn't enough. Now I mixed this with a cinnamon tea at one point, or Lauren did for me, and that was actually really good. I might give that one a shot because um, cider is super sweet. It's yeah. just overbearing, super sweet. Well, you'd ask so. me, do I do, do I add sugar to this? I'm like, I don't think you need to. No, I didn't need to. So. It was really good. I didn't, as he said, I knocked it out before we even started up on the podcast, so I have backup drink, but <laughs> more and more drink, more and more drink. I literally got three things up here. I got, I just got the cider. I'm kind of, I feel like I should have brought something else. <laughs> well, if you want to go while I pander about uh, the movies, no, 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 we got this. We got this. Yeah. Okay. okay. I can, I can make it sparingly last. I just little, little sips, little sips. You got two hours to go, dude. Yeah. No. Uh, we're good. So let's start with uh, last week's movies. Last week's movies, The Rock. We did Nicolas Cage. We did Nicolas Cage. Uh, the Rock. Um, I really enjoyed this movie. I, I thought you would. Uh, so it's 1996. Uh, it's an action thriller. It's um, Sean Connery, Ed Harris, and Nicolas Cage are the front runners. Yeah, and it's Michael Bay before Transformers. Yeah, I mean the explosions are still there, but yeah, it definitely has the explosions. It's Michael Bay. <laughs> like... Over at the last scene of the movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I liked it. I liked it a lot. The only downside I would have with it is the 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 prison shower scene when they were all at that Mexican standoff and yeah. a rock slid off and caused the whole entire action scene. I'm like, that one could have been avoided. That yeah, was, like the, the, all of you are trained military personnel that shoot on action. You don't shoot on jumpiness. But then yeah. again, it they was wanted like, a body count and they had to get away to get it down to just Connery and Cage. Connery Cage and technically Ed Harris. Well, Ed Harris being the bad guy. Yeah. Spoiler. <laughs> Spoiler. It, he, and to be fair, it's not evil. It's like chaotic good. Yeah. To get the final product that they want through any means necessary. Which I'm like, that's actually a really good point or a good way to get an antagonist out of a technical protag- protagonist. Yeah. He's and been it, protecting US for so long that he says, I'm tired of you know veterans living like this change it if you don't i'll force you to change it and even at the end um when it comes time for him to uh bomb san francisco he well, like down. he threatened he, he backs down he, he doesn't actually want to do it yeah no he just he sto- he went through all the difficulty to steal these things and do this powerful sne- scenario if you will and then all of a sudden he's like it was a bluff. It was all a bluff. I, I don't have any, like, I love America. I'm not going to go destroying what I love just because, you know, I have an issue. Killing all the innocents, things yeah. like that. Yeah. And I'm like, that's good, good. But then all the other guys are like, well, I want to get paid. Mm-hmm. That's true antagonist. And they all get their just desserts in the end. Yeah. Uh, what did you think about the uh, the way Cage takes one of them out? The oh. thing in the mouth? Yeah. Um, yeah. I will admit having cage go from like this little book body to you know i gotta go into this and i have to i have to do this and then trying to coerce connery into helping out because i feel like he did it like four times where he was like no i need you to help me yeah that was a little annoying that they kept going back on that because connery's supposed to be like he's already not american um and we locked him up so he left him in prison for the last like 30 years or whatever mm-hmm. uh so he already doesn't actually care but i don't know the whole having to go back and get him to do to rejoin up like three four times was a bit annoying 
So it did great in the box office. They spent about seventy five mil. They made three hundred and thirty five. Yep. yep. Um, and it's actually showing on TNT this week. <laughs> That's funny. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, you can catch it on Today. October. October. <laughs> oh, October. Sorry, I saw Thursday. My bad. Oh, yeah, October third at uh, twelve a.m. Twelve a.m. <laughs> Start from midnight. Hopefully, you can catch it if you want to catch it in a late late night flick if you now, have not already. I mean, people say like it's getting mediocre reviews yeah, would you say it gets but 7.4 out of 10 on imdb 58 I, on metacritic and 66 on rotten if, tomatoes if i had to give an early overall i would say it's a good 7 out of 10 okay like it's a fair it's a fair number a little bit of here's and there's he said she said and then a little bit of protagonist push if you will to force nicholas cage uh stanley out of his little hole and actually be a hero and then he had to lie about what happened to uh sean connery's character so he could get away yeah and i was like all that very wholesome good good overall the climax was very very drawing but i felt like a few scenes were i mean it was 96 they had to force the hand of some scenes so yeah it was okay it was all right it was a seven out of ten i like the um my, my favorite part of the movie is when he kills the guy with the air conditioner and oh. Cage is just freaking out and it's like, is that normal? Uh, cause the guy's legs are twitching. He's like, what the leg thing? Yes. The leg thing. Yeah, that's normal. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> what do you want to do? Kill him again? <laughs> um, but so do you think it's fair that it's sitting at a 66 on Rotten Tomatoes or 58 on Meta? I feel like 7.4 out of 10 7, isn't too bad. Yeah, 7.4 is fine. The 66 is near the 7. I'm okay with, but the Metacritic... The people who are on Metacritic like to... Try to be Metacritics. Try to be super <laughs> Metacritic. Like, I do Metacritical thinking, but I don't do Metacriticisms. Um, um, but I do I do think it's a little low. That's it. Yeah. I don't, I don't have anything... I, I'm not going to go clicking into it and start analyzing it. Well, it's got an 88% on Google. Yeah, and that's user base, yeah. which I'm like, good, good, good. Google always seems to have the higher scores. Google seems to either have higher scores or about the same scores, depending on the movie. Mm, there, are, there are some movies that the users will agree with the critics on, mm-hmm. like Hellboy 2019. Yeah, I didn't watch it. <laughs> uh, I did. It's not good. It was a mess. Yeah. It w- I would give that a low three, maybe a two. Like, some of the scenes were really good, and, and I will say Harbour does do a good job. It's just the writing, and the, the it's like, okay, pacing, okay, pacing, garbage! Yeah. And it's a slog to try and get through all of it. Well, that's one of the reasons why I'm working on the scoring system, because it's like, you, the writing drags that movie down. But at the end of the day, you also don't want to say that the acting was bad, because he's a good actor. He did what he could with what he was given, right? Yeah. So it's like, that. you know, that's why I'm working on this. Yeah. Um, so the next movie we watched, actually, we watched this one first. Mm, yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, the next one is Season of the Witch, another Nicolas Cage. This one's 2011. No, we this one second. Did we watch second? We watched this one second. Okay. Um, but 2011, Season of the Witch with Nicolas Cage. What'd you think? Uh, I could see where you guys liked it and wanted me to watch it. Um, and... Ignoring Netflix's fuck up. Don't hold that against the movie. The fuzziness. Oh no 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 yeah no no the, no, the, no, the no, movie no. was like fuzzy and grainy. Something was going wrong no, on Netflix that night. I, I will. I, I get that, but no, it was fine. It, that that's fine. I'm talking about like pacing and plot. Having you try and you know understand that could she be a witch? Is she manipulating everybody? And then the climax scene and all that. I felt like it was just. It was properly paced. It was properly told. I just feel like it was rushed for some odd reason. I I know that it it sounds very strange for me to say that because it had a generalized pacing. It was kind of like Lord of the Rings, but taking along a a person you don't want to take along. Yeah. Go from point A to point B, call it quits. You would have liked the whole picking them apart before they get there to be drawn out a little bit more. Rather than boom, one's down. Boom, the next one's down. I mean, either that or like, did they... Did she really need to be all the way over there to do what she did? She could have just torn them to pieces and called it a day. But the goal was to get where they were taking her so she could destroy the book. She knew where they, they knew where they were going. She knew where they were going. I don't think she knew where the book was. I think that's why she needed someone to take her. Mm. I don't know. And that's, that's why every time one of them wanted to kill her, that's why she took them out. They, they touch on that part too. Like yeah, they did. The guys she's killing is because they want to kill her before she gets to get 
where she's trying to go. So, uh, and also a little bit of C- CG blender that I was like, mm, it doesn't look great, but 2011 eh. could have been better, I guess. Yeah, it could have been a little bit better. I don't think 11 is fair. <laughs> That's what Rotten Tomatoes has it at 11 percent. 5.4. Maybe I mean a little bit higher than that. I'd say I, 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 me personally, I'd probably give it a six. I give it a firm six. Okay. I um, just, I feel like there was again. A lo- it's at eighty eight from the Google users. Okay, I see that. I don't. Mm. I can't count the Roger Ebert thing because two out of four is a really hard number to do. I never understood why he did four. Um, thumbs. Yeah, but after Susser stopped being a thing, I would say each one's twenty five percent, so it's a fifty percent. Okay. Um, plus, I'm not even sure if Roger was still still around. He may have been. I don't remember when no, he died. Uh, we, we we actually looked that up. Oh, we did. And he was up okay. until 2012. Okay. So then this can be a review from Roger because I know his website still goes on to review shit, and I'm like, uh, it's not the same. No, it is not the same. Um, um, but I I mean, there's a lot of back and forth. Uh, the idea that they were ex crusaders and all that. I was like, okay, cool. You know, you can work on that. And then it was like, okay, now you have a a mercenary mission to take this woman to another area to... Or be locked up for abandoning the crusade. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, good conflict. But then it's like, you're going to take this this so-and-so witch into another area, and you have the, the mindset that she could be evil. No, we'll, we'll deal with it when we get there. No, we'll deal with it when we get there. If... Cage's character for one second said, "Let's just do it. Screw it. Let's just finish her off." I guarantee you that the movie would have been a little bit better off if it sparked it. Yeah, I mean, then she would have tried. She would have just killed them right then and there. That would have been a little bit more of a press point then, because. But then the movie's over and well, bad no, no, guy no, no, wins. No. Then, well, then it would have the idea that they would attempt to do something about it and probably have another hero or. Maybe he would just be injured, heal for a month, and go and finish what he started. The problem is they like, need the book, and they don't even realize that. Uh, and it's that one copy of the book that's left, because all the others have been destroyed. Okay. I mean, the opening scene was fucking great, with the Hound playing another uh, person of uh, armor in the medieval time. This is actually probably before that, considering oh. it's 2011. Oh, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying, but I'm just saying, like... That's where he got to start then. Yeah. But I'm just like, oh, okay, the hound is in this too. Okay, yeah, all right. Uh, and he does another snarky, you know, like one liner of they're at the bottom of the lake. They're fine. You don't need to pull them up and bury them. But he did. But, <laughs> he needed but he, to. He attempted to. Yeah. He, he got through some, most of them. Yeah, he got through uh, two out of three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I, I will say it felt weird to go from that opening scene into the crusade fighting scenes. That was a bit. I wouldn't call it jarring. I'd be uh, like a little set back, if you will. Yeah. Like, it was a little strange, but I thought, I mean, that's fine. Um, are you mad you watched it? No. Okay. It's just, it. That's a good thing, though. Like, yeah, at the end of the day, thing. it's a good thing. It, it's a good thing. Um, it's not Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> it is not Batman vs. Superman. I saw that in theaters. I saw that in theaters, too. Ugh. I didn't if, we, if we saw it together, I guarantee you, you'd probably walk out with me and try and get our cash back. Uh, the problem was who I went with. I couldn't walk out. <laughs> oh. Damn shame. Um, so tonight, tonight's movies were spurred out of the fact that I realized you hadn't seen Adventures in Babysitting. Correct. Because we were going over the Disney list. So we decided Adventures in Babysitting um, and The Burbs because we want to keep it in the 80s and we want to keep it kind of funny, kind of serious, not too serious. Mixture. Mixture. Um, so the burbs is basically Tom Hanks lives in the suburbs and it's a relatively normal suburb. He, you kind of pan through and see all of his different neighbors and whatnot. And they get new neighbors who he is convinced are like mad scientists or something. Yeah. Okay. So he goes crazy. Cool. They they, they seem like they might be, you know, kidnapping people and stuff like that. And he's starts investigating. Okay. Uh, and this one. This one has a 91% on Google, and everything else is 7 or lower again. So this is very strange. I'm thinking critics are just salty that it's nothing like today, and so that's why the numbers start dropping. 
I think the problem is that critics expect every movie to be made to try to compete for an Oscar when that's not the point of every movie. Yeah, I, I, I'm curious of something. Okay. Um, as for... Yeah, see, look at fucking what critics say about that. Yeah, he brought up uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, and it's got a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, and this one should have gotten... This one, in my opinion, should have gotten DiCaprio his... His Oscar. But he was nominated for it. He was on. He was nominated, but I'm saying it should have get. It should have. Yeah, but that's my point. This, in their minds, is a movie that was made for the Oscars, as where The Burbs was not a movie made for the Oscars. Mm. You know. No, that's not fair. Then that would not. Be I, fair. I. That's just my assumption on how critics look at things based off of looking at how yeah. things go. Okay. All right. Um, it's just I. I don't want things to be held that high. What's uh Adam Sandler's new movie actually got a hundred percent fresh. Um. But I think it's from users, not from critics. And it's, I guess, a big deal because it's his first time ever doing that. Huh? No, not... Okay, it's not Uncut Gems. Murder Mystery. That's right. Um, Scroll down. Oh, 45. Click on that, though, because I think that's showing the critic. Oh, no, it's down to 40 now. Whoa. Yeah. Originally, I heard that it had hit, like, 100, and people were loving it. What the fuck is this porn stash? And he's a cop. Okay. I don't know. I, I guess the mustache was supposed to sell him as a cop. Okay, so it's a 45 and 40 now, but originally, from what I understand, this did hit 100, and it was like a big deal because it was the first time he had hit 100 on Rotten Tomatoes, and he had just called them out in his most recent stand-up, basically, because the name is called, uh, uh, was it, uh, Certified Fresh. Oh. Because Rotten Tomatoes rips him apart every single time. It's like the people on Rotten Tomatoes immediately just go, oh, Santa movie? Crap. And don't actually watch him, I feel That's like. That's not fair. I, I'm gonna be honest. He's had some fucking flunkies in his time. Like, Jack definitely, and, Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill's one everyone goes to, and click, I, I watched it. I don't remember I, much. I of would it. say Click would be his last halfway adequate one before it started going like downhill with Pixels. I don't uh, watch Pixels. Pixels. Oh God, don't. Like, I didn't mind Grown Ups. Grown Ups was okay. Grown Ups was okay. That was after Click. I know. Um, let's actually go back to the list because there might have been something else. Hold on, let's go back. Uh, Hotel Transylvania. The first one was good. Yeah. The other two have been cash grabs. I think. Well, I heard two was actually a pretty adequate one. Two was okay. Two was okay. Three, uh, I heard, was a cash grab. Yeah, three was definitely a cash grab. Um, we, we saw all three. Uh, he, he did. That's my boy with uh, the Lonely Island guy. What is his name? Um, uh, Sandberg. Sandberg. And Sandberg like played like a straight lace guy. It was interesting. Um, Fifty First Dates. Was a good one, but that's I think before that was, click. That was before click, yeah. Uh, and I like that one. Fifty first dates pretty good. Um, uh, bl- when he did blended, that one was relatively more recent. Um, that was him and Drew again. Uh, yeah, two thousand fourteen. Yeah. I actually really like blended. Okay. Uh, don't miss Zohan. I hated that one. Okay. Um, longest yard. The I liked it. You liked it? Yeah. Okay. Now, if we're going before that, that wedding, wedding singer is great. Wedding singer is great. Uh, Little Nicky. Uh, I enjoy Little Nicky. It's one of Lauren's favorites, though. Um, she really, really likes that movie. Okay. Uh, Ridiculous Six. Uh, I watched it. It definitely had its funny moments, but I know that there was a bunch of behind-the-scenes stuff involving Native Americans, and that obviously is an issue. Okay. Uh, Rain Over Me? Oh, that's the one about 9-11, I think. That's right. That's right. Um, I now pronounce it Chuck and Larry. I know that's before it, but would you it's say? It's okay. Yeah, okay. Lauren really likes that one, too. Uh, no, I didn't mind it. It's okay. It's okay. Spanglish was interesting because it was a serious one for him. Um, okay. And then the cobbler. I don't know. If didn't see talking. it. That's okay. the one where he, he fixes the shoes and like you can see like into people's lives or whatnot. Kind of. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't see that one. Um, what about his animated flick? Eight so, Crazy Eight Crazy Nights. Nights. It's raunchy humor. It's um, shit humor. Literally, because the poop jokes. Um, it's, I don't know, uh, that one's an interesting one. And in that uh, Oops. it gets a lot of hate, and I understand why, but the hate kind of bleeds into weird spots. I've talked to you about this before, where I was reading a Rotten Tomatoes review on it, and it says that this movie sets animation back by 20 years. And I'm like, I mean, there are, there are just, worse. Just because the jokes are bad doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the animation. Yeah, I mean, especially are. because some of the... The characters look the way they look, but the backgrounds are very Thomas Kincaid paintings. Yeah, they're very they're very nice. Like the animation isn't bad. So that one is one I've always liked to use for the fact that it's people going, "It's Adam Sandler. We've got to say it's shit." 
And the poor guy like, doesn't deserve it for you, some you, of them. You guys keep going and buying the tickets, though. <laughs> yeah. Like, or now it's, you know, watching it on Netflix. Yeah. Well, I mean, the cobbler I heard actually. Hold on, let's check. Let's check the cobbler real quick. Uh, where did it? Where did it go? There let's it try is. That. Let's let's see what the cobbler got. Nine. Jesus fucking Christ! I thought it was somewhat adequate. I wouldn't have called it bad. Nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, now you've got me curious. Um, yeah, that's the uh, nine from the critics, thirty-six from the audience. Let's just find find a review real quick. Let's see. Uh, on the tomato. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Um, I let's just... go with one. I can. <laughs> That's rude. Now, if you click on it, it'll probably give you more of a review. Because or, I've met the actual. Oh, the actual. Yeah, because that's gonna take you to his page. Oh no. Okay, that's that's, that's the whole thing. So <laughs> one person, David, El Elrich, Erlich, Erlich, Erlich. Okay, he's a top critic on Rotten Tomatoes. And his review for the cobbler is, "I just can't take this film serious uh, seriously." Two out of five rating. That kind of sucks when it's he. He's a top critic and just says, "I just can't take this film seriously," and doesn't have any feedback. I, yeah, I can't take your. Okay, if you're called a critic, what is the one thing you're gonna give? Criticism. Yeah, I can't take your criticism seriously because you didn't give me anything. Ebert always typed up about his movies. Yeah. Except Hercules, because he was being a bitch about that one. Uh, do me oh, a favor, geez. scroll up. I want to see what year this movie came out, The Cobbler. Uh, uh, 2014. 2015? Uh, 2015. 2015. Okay. Um, I was just curious. Um, so, a couple years ago. Yeah. Uh, throughout The Cobbler, Sandler himself seems more invested than he's been for a long time. But the rest of this ghastly movie lets him down. That's, that's not a reason to really screw him out of the the better press then. I would say give give it a fair acclamation. Yeah, sure. It's a, why did it take me here? Uh, it doesn't look like there are reviews available anymore then. Okay. But even still, it gives you... He gives... Even in this slight snippet, he gives a little bit of criticism, mm -hmm. which means that there is something to improve. Okay, the writing was not great, but it seems that Sandler did well. And it doesn't showcase what was given in a, the rating. But if we look here, the one out of five one. Oh no! Here's something I find interesting. So you've got this guy you were just talking about, uh, Bill G. Ibrier. Bill G. Ibri. Okay, from New York Magazine slash Vulture that talked about uh, thought the cobbler Sa uh, Sandler's uh, himself seems more invested. Yada yada yada. Right. Yada yada yada. But the guy right above him straight up says a top of the range supporting cast makes this uh, grindingly grindingly dull. dull experience almost bearable. So, so this guy is saying the other cast is great, while the guy beneath him is saying Sandler. uh, that Sandler's great. And the guy, uh, the one that says the cast, I got to credit, it's uh, Tom Huddleston uh, from Time Out. But he got a lot of phone calls after Huddleston fam uh, became famous. Yeah, all right. Um, it's, that one. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just literally one word, ugh. And it's a 0.5 out of 5, so that's a, a generalized 10% uh, out of 100, or 1 out of 10. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to be a critic, criticize. Now, it says full review. Click it. I'm this was this review was also written two years after the movie came out, which I find interesting. No. Wow. Oh, that's weird, because the UG part said 2017. I guess it was maybe put up there. So let's take a look here. Uh, Ellen Birkin and Dennis Hoffman? What? Yeah. I mean, you got some good front runners being side characters. Like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. What what made this movie not great? So they did write a full review, yeah. um, and then gave it the point five out of five. But on Rotten Tomatoes, it just shows that they said "ugh," um, because that's how they end it. They end it with "ugh." Yeah. Uh, and yet, in the universe of this movie, that makes you a superhero. Ugh. I don't know. I, I didn't mind Cobbler. I I didn't watch all of it, I will admit, because I was busy doing something else at the time. Let's go back to Sandler when he was, I don't know, what, what do you want to say, top of top of his game? Let's okay. look at... What would it be then? Well, I mean, Billy Madison is one that everyone saw. Um, t -t -t Today, Junior. What's another one from around that time? Uh, uh, we got The Wedding Singer. The Wedding Singer. A Water Boy. Daddy? We go with the big, yeah, click on Big Day. 1999. Let's see. 40%. How? <laughs> How the fuck did Big Daddy? Big 74 Daddy from the audience. Okay, that's fair. I'll, I'll give it I'll give it 75% out of 100. That's fine and fair. But when you give it less than that, I demand 
I demand to know why you don't like it. So let's take a look at the rotten looks. Uh, uh, no. A heavy-handed sentiment provokes a most violent gag reflex? What are you watching? So this reminds me of something. Um, did you ever listen to the local radio station 107.5? Way back when, yeah. Okay. They used to have... We had a yeah, local see... movie... No, no, no. It's Extreme Rock Radio. Oh, that's it. Okay. Um, and now it's just, I think, Extreme or something like that. Because Extreme Rock isn't really a thing anymore like it used to be. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, but they used to do a weekly thing where they would have a local film critic, same guy, come down and give his reviews of the weekend movies. And as soon as uh, they would say, what about this one? He would go, Adam Santa? They go, yeah. He goes, oh, that's an immediate no for me. That's not fair. Yeah. Like, Adam Sandler's not bad. It's just, he he does try to put out some not so great movies, but I don't think it's at his fault. He's just like, oh, I like having this slapstick. Like, Grandma's Boy came out of left field. That wasn't him. It's Happy Madison Productions, but it wasn't him. It, it, it uh, He had help with writing. Oh, maybe he wrote it, yeah. He, he helped writing. out with writing. Yeah. But even still, he put it, he put his mark on it. He said, all my friends are wanting to do this. Fine. You guys have fun with it. I don't want to, I don't see myself in any of the roles. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's great. Came out of left field. It did okay, would you say? I don't remember how it did. I just know that I actually enjoy that movie and think it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Um, That was one where when someone took my DVD, I was very upset and went and bought it again. (laughs) Okay. Grandma's Boy was 2006. 16% Rotten Tomatoes. But then you look at Google users. 90%. I'm curious about something. Is it the stoner comedy that's the issue? Is Me? it the fart jokes that's the issue? But not for Google users. I guess it is for the I guess it is for the critics. Maybe the critics think that raunchy humor is a no for them. They don't, they must have that in their mentality that it's not funny to them because they can't relate to it. It's hard to really understand I'm why I'm curious they were doing this what stuff. is American Pie's rotten tomato rating? Cuz that's raunch humor. Yeah, just Google will give it to us. Okay. 61. 61 with an 89% on Google. Like, how how is this any different? 58 it's, from Metacritic. Yeah. Metacritic, I think, is always too harsh. Because when I looked up the Metacritic for a game, it was super low. And I'm like, why? This is one of my favorite games. What the fuck? And they didn't give uh, a real reason. They okay, just... but now here's the thing. Off to the side here, they've got current movie releases. Toy Story 4 is at an 84 on Metacritic right now. Everyone I know that's seen that movie says it does not feel like a fucking Toy Story movie. Which is a bad thing. Yeah, that's Like, not a Toy Story movie should feel like a fucking Toy Story movie. Now, do you think Once Upon a Time in, Ho- in Hollywood deserves to be a little bit higher than an 83? I really liked it. Okay. I would give it a good rating. Okay. But I feel like the reason why it's getting an 83 is people are going in thinking this is a Tarantino movie. It's going to be a very specific way, and it doesn't get to Tarantino levels of Tarantino until the end of the movie, Coffee. which worked for this movie. It didn't need to be Tarantino from beginning to end. He did well with this movie, I think. Oh, wow. Okay, on the meta score with the with the uh, critic reviews, critic reviews, not a single three or below for the negative. Yeah, it's six mixed and 55 positive. But when you get over to user score, score. you got 107 for... This is Once Upon a Time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's rough. That is weird. I kind of want to look at it. I want to see... But it's got these... 641 positives. That's so true. So the numbers... The numbers kind of lean, but I'm curious. Zero. I honestly don't know what everyone is raving about. Sure, there was a couple of funny parts at the end. After a long 2.5 hours of nothing... They made it look like it did in 1969, but who really? But really, who cares? Watch a movie filmed back then. If uh, it's not, let me expand it. Even still, having them say 2.5 hours of nothing does Have that sound fair? No. Okay. Um, 2.5 hours of nothing is and isn't fair. So that 2.5 hours, for the most part, a very huge chunk of that takes place in a day okay um two tops uh but what it does is it kind of gives you a glimpse into where Pitt's at in his life and where dicaprio's at in his life and kind of then shows why their friendship's important okay then that's fine and fair and it, and it does it through just showing DiCaprio's character going to the set for the day and being on the set and 
Pitt, uh, Brad Pitt going through, you know, fixing a TV antenna and, you know, picking up a girl that's hitchhiking, things like that. It it it, it was calm. D- Tarantino does. It was very, very calm for a Tarantino. Movie. Yeah, Tarantino does a very interesting thing of showing you scenes that don't really matter much, but you, you want to know what they're doing. Like when he cuts through the fence. And walks to the field in Pulp Fiction to head to his apartment. Yeah, that you could cut out technically. Like, you didn't... But you don't, because it's like... Tarantino shows us what all the other movies go. Picture it in your head. Yeah. Oh, he got there. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Like, no. But Tarantino will show you him doing all that just because it's like... Okay, he he made his way to that area. Had to deal with Vincent when he got in. So, here's one for you. I fucking hate people like this. Horrible. Horrible. We left after almost two hours and the most boring film I've ever seen. Total waste of time and money. Do yourself a favor and save your money. I'd give it half a uh, give it half a star out of five. Why did you leave two hours in? Yeah, why did finish the movie? Fin- yeah, maybe the last bit of the movie. Maybe I don't know. The last like... bit of the movie is where it really gets Tarantino. Yeah, um, sets that transport the audience back in time. Plus, plus. So okay, cool. An an interesting buddy relationship. Plus. Long periods of where not much is happening. Negative is a little ultra violence. Negative. I can't think of anyone I would recommend this movie to. Wait a minute. What about those two high pluses that you just gave it? Yeah. So you're. That's, that's two two pluses. Another plus. So that's three pluses. And then just two minuses. Two, two minuses, minuses. And then two minuses. Well, I guess long periods is supposed to be a minus too, and he doesn't. Metacritic won't let you expand any of the reviews. That's fine. Now here, here's my issue with this. Um negative a little ultra violence there's one scene of violence it happens at the end of the movie okay it's one scene of violence oh kind of there's an earlier one but it's not like bloody or anything um my my issue is that you went and saw a tarantino movie and were surprised that there was blood shit yeah uh, I don't think l- let's go through it really quick. Uh, Pulp Fiction, blood. Uh, Reservoir Dogs, blood. Kill Bill 1, blood. Kill Bill 2, blood. blood. A lot of blood. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hateful Eight, blood. Django Unchained, a lot of blood. A lot of blood. Um, I'm missing one, and aren't Samuel I? Samuel Jackson bleeding. Yeah, I'm missing one. My point stands. You're pulling up Tarantino films? Yeah. Fun fact, he helped write uh, The Rock. He came really? in. And did, yeah, he came in and did some touch-ups. Uh, okay. Glorious bastards. Blood. Blood. Uh, Django and Chain. Death proof. Oh yeah, death proof. Blood. Um, Jackie, Jackie Brown. Brown. I don't know. I don't remember. Death till dawn. Uh, blood. blood. Uh, Vampire blood. Yeah. True romance. Blood. I think. Uh, Natural born killers. Oh, blood. Blood. Sin um, City. Blood. And blood, but I don't remember him being part of that. Let's find out. He may have produced it. Uh, oh, director, uh, directors. Okay, yeah, him, wow. Frank Miller, and Robert Rodriguez all directed it. Okay. Blood and testicle ripping. Yeah. Um, oh my God, he did Little Nicky. I mean, oh, no. he's in Little Nicky. Oh. Yeah. Uh, he's the blind. Uh, That's right. That. Yeah. As soon as you said blind, it locked in for me. Um. Now he didn't do Planet Terror, but it's part of Grindhouse because Robert Rodriguez did it. So it's a high five. Yeah. Well, yeah, they were released together. You can go watch them both together. Yeah. Uh, he produced it. Yeah. So, um, um we, you really didn't expect all that blood at a Tarantino film. And then again, you're with this one, it's a little different, so shut up. Yeah, like, you don't get the ultra-violence until the end of the movie. And, yeah, no, I, that's dumb. And even then, it's, personally, it was ultra-violence I was rooting for. Yeah, so, shut up. Uh, all these feel unfair, and I haven't even seen the movie. Like, I'm, characters have zero development. You just told me less than two seconds ago that all these characters were on doing their business in their own individual way because it was how they passed the time. Mm-hmm. And this one says characters have zero development. Stories lead to nothing and movie drags for two hours. I apologize to my wife for wasting your time. Do you so, find that to be accurate? I don't know that saying zero development is necessarily true. They don't change who they are at the end of the movie, but that's because they don't need to change who they are. They're okay. grown-ass men being themselves. Okay. Uh, they end up leading to a certain point in their lives, and it ends in a way that you could potentially see a sequel that could then make DiCaprio's character grow. Okay. So, I mean, I'm glad that it got a 7.6 out of 10, then. With those negative reviews. Because it's got neg- 641 positives. Yeah. So, I'm like, I'm glad that those positives outraised this number, because I worry about anything else. As far as the actual critics and them giving no negatives, I'm like, 
That's a turn of phrase. Yeah. That's a turn of phrase you don't see. I'm curious as to what has 100% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, let's find I out. I want to know me, what... The movie. Well, you're on Metacritic oh, still. Best, I know. Okay. What, do you want to Rotten Tomatoes? I said Rotten Tomatoes, but we oh. can check out Metacritic. That's fine. All right, best... Wow. Citizen Something Kane. Something you don't like. Well, Ci- you, you personally don't like. We watched it in film class. Um, Citizen Kane is one of the most overrated fucking movies of all goddamn time. Now, would you say Godfather is as well? No, actually, I think Godfather is really good. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Fucking, fucking. So, I, hope that I, I actually have on. friends that don't like Godfather, and I'm like, why? And they're like, I'm bored sitting through it. And I'm like... Part three, I can see. Part no, three, part can... three is terrible. Part, no, I wouldn't say terrible. It, it does have plot and development. I would just say it's very slow to build that plot. I cannot tell you the last time I watched part three. I do own it. I cannot tell you the last time I watched it. Okay, that's fine and fair. But part one and two, go you know, put that shit to the mattresses and go. So my issue, oh, go to the mattresses. Uh, my issue with Godfather that I could see, and not even my issue, but the issue people have with Godfather are that I can see and agree. Okay, is that there are moments where it's like they're sitting around talking a, a lot. Like it's it's worse than Goodfellas, and Goodfellas yeah. does a lot of fucking talking. But that's the problem is is if you can't fucking sit through a movie and listen to some goddamn dialogue, the movie's not the problem. You are. Yeah. It. Um. What's the fucking show? Uh, Kirby Enthusiasm. Yeah, I've never actually seen it, but I've heard amazing things. It's great. It's all talking. It's all talking. It's all fucking talking. But I. Find it's it another just, show about nothing. <laughs> it. I mean, yes and no. Like he complains a lot, but then his friends are like, "But you got to realize something. You're analyzing it in the wrong way." And he's like, but I, you know, I'm just trying to live my everyday life, and this is the best way to do it. And everyone's like, maybe it's not the right. Like, it's character development through fucking talking. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of movies that do that, or a lot of movies that do it through very subtle action. Yeah. And not a lot of people see that. And The Godfather, I think, does it really well, mm-hmm. especially during the um, the the car drive scene when he goes back for his cannoli. Just that one fucking thing where he's like, oh, I forgot my cannoli. I was like, oh, yeah, he does admire his mama's cooking more than anything else like he'll kill everyone cold blood but when he's like oh i gotta grab my mama's cannoli what upset you most about this movie story-wise like not like not like oh fuck this movie because it fucked up this part of the story but like you're watching it and you're upset because you were sad with what happened or something Uh, like that i've got two parts maybe uh, three i'm curious to know yours because i'm honestly i was very sad to see luca gravi die Okay, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't call it a negative, but yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not trying to say they're negative okay. for the movie. Oh, I'm just okay. saying it's a sad point in the movie. Um, my other one is it's kind of iffy because it's like he was the brash one when Sonny died. Um, I wasn't. I was like, I was actually like, eh. yeah, I was up there in the chest with it. I was like, it but was, really, it, at the ending of one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When when the Don dies, playing with his grandson has the heart attack. That there, I, uh, yeah. That was some okay. fucking feels. <laughs> okay, but it it's a part of the story. That yeah. one, the, and that story. And that's why I'm not mad at the movie for yeah. doing it. Sonny deserved it. I will say the first one that you mentioned, Luca Yeah, that yeah. one. That one didn't need to. But he sleeps with the fishes. He sleeps with the fishes. Oh. You're going to sleep with the fishes. Um, God, he would, he played a marvelous. Now, now I'm curious about the rest of these. Amazing. So next we have Rear Window. I have no fucking. It's a, it's Alfred Hitchcock. Okay. It was remade twice. The first time it was remade. Now okay, let me give uh, the idea. Uh, guy's stuck in a wheelchair. Okay. And so he's basically got the time to look out the ruin of his house, and he does it through a camera because he's a photographer, and he sees uh he's on his neighbor's apartment and starts. Seeing, thinking he's seeing his neighbor commit murder. Interesting. The so re- it's like, so it's like, um, oh, what's the one with Shia LaBeouf? That's the third, re- uh, the second remake. Is it? Yeah, Disturbia. Wow. Yeah, that's the second remake. Um, now the one in between those, it was called Rear Window. Okay. And it was after he had his accident. It's Christopher Reeves. So he was stuck in a wheelchair in real life, and they decided to make a Rear Window remake, and they let him be in it because. The I'm, characters in a wheelchair. And how do you think that one did? I think it was great. Okay. Uh, Chris would, Reeves was fucking amazing, too. Would so. you say it's better than the original? I think it's there with the original. I don't think it's better. Roger. But it, it's there. And I, Disturbia is great, but I do think Disturbia is 
below yeah, distributor, the original. Distributor is its own brand. Because His it's... friend in that, the Asian guy, is fucking hilarious. He's also in the Friday the 13th remake. And I just fucking love his character in both those movies. Okay. And that one, he, he fucking acts like he's being killed by the neighbor and then shows up in Shiloh's fucking uh, closet. And then in... Um, oh, what is it called? Uh, in the Friday the 13th remake, at one point... He gets high or something. He, he breaks something, and the, the jock asshole yells at him to uh, go and uh, f- uh, fix it. You better fucking fix it. And he's like, all right, I can fix it. I can fix it. And as he's carrying the parts out to the fucking uh, shed in the back, he starts talking. He's like, my, betty, my daddy used to beat me over this chair, so now you have to fix it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he's a fun character. He's a fun character. Casablanca. Um, so Casablanca, the problem is, is it's old. I enjoy it. You, you kind of watch it and you go, "Fuck!" Can the movie just be over? I will admit, yeah, I can. I can see that being one of the issues. It's been a long time since I've seen Casablanca, but from what I can remember, it was it was very impactful at it. From I would assume it's time, considering it's like 40, 43. Yeah. So it was very impactful. Well, it's set in forty one. Forty one. But even still, yeah. like it was fresh. Yeah. Like it was, it it was a history lesson that didn't take too far away from the history, considering it was only a couple of years ago. Yeah. So it was strong. It was impactful. Uh, the actors and actresses played super well. Bogart, God well, damn. Humphrey Bogart's amazing in it. Rest his fucking soul. Now, um, the rest I don't know. Yeah, really the next know. one is Boyhood, which I haven't seen. Three Colors Red, I haven't seen. Vertigo, that's another uh, Albert Hitchcock one. That one's pretty good. Okay. Uh, Notorious. Notorious, I don't think I've seen. Oh, Singing in the Rain. Singing in the Rain's great. I do like Singing in the Rain. Um, City Lights, I want to say I saw once at Chaplin. Uh, Moonlight, I've seen. Moonlight was okay. Okay. Um, OG Pinocchio. I think it's important because it teaches a lesson to children. Yeah, don't be, don't be greedy. Um, don't be a jackass. Don't be a jackass. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't be an ass. Yeah. Um, totally. but I don't ever see myself sitting down to just watch Pinocchio. Another Bogart film, The Treasure of uh, Sierra Madre. Okay. Uh, Pan's Labyrinth is amazing. Have you Pan's seen it? Lab- yeah, I have yeah. seen it. And and I don't like reading. Yeah, it just did the hand thing over the eyes. Yeah. Um. North by Northwest is pretty good. Uh, I heard they did a remake of this one. Uh, they did. It's another... Uh, I want to say it's another... Bogart? Hitch- Hitchcock. Hitchcock? I, I think it's another Hitchcock. I could but be wrong. Let's find out. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. It's been a bit, so... Um, now, one that normally makes... Yep. The, yeah, it's Hitchcock. Okay. No, one that normally makes these lists that I always find interesting Where? is um, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Let's see if it's on here. Because uh, Doctor Strange Love. Oh, Doctor Strange Love, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Mom, is amazing and really makes you stop and think about our world. Gone with the Wind. Uh, I will give Gone with the Wind credit. Um, I think it's great. I think it deserves its rewards. It's got that fucking line. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Um, I don't, th- don't think it needs to be remade, and I'm pretty sure that that remake is just waiting to fucking happen, and it'll be shit. Well, same thing for American Graffiti. Ooh, Some Like It Hot. Have you seen it? No. Oh, it's great. Uh, Marilyn Monroe. Ooh. These two guys witness a mob hit. And so they need to hide from the mob, and the only way they can think of doing it is they're they're music, uh, musicians. So they go to get a job as uh, traveling. The only job available though is for two women. So, so they, they do, dress up as women. So this is one of the first uh, uh, white chicks kind, kind of thing. Of, yeah, uh, Mrs. Doubtfire would have been what I would have gone for. Oh, yeah, okay. Or Tootsie. Or okay. Um, but it's great because one of them starts falling in love with uh, uh, Marilyn. And the other one has a guy that's falling in love with him. <laughs> and he's like, I'm not interested, dude. Back off. <laughs> Pulls off the makeup. <sighs> okay. Uh, you American... know what? Seriously, spoiler for the end. Uh, American Graffiti. Hold on before we get into American Graffiti. Okay. Spoiler for the end for Some Like It Hot. They're escaping from the mob at the end. They're on a boat. Monroe and the guy are embracing each other. The other one's still in Get Up. And, the, and it's the dude that's going after him. Like the one that's into him. That's helping them escape. And he's cu- he's coming up with all these problems. He's like, I can't have kids. We'll adopt. Um, I don't shave my legs. That's natural. It's fine. He's coming up with all these things. And finally, he rips his wig off and goes, I'm a man. And the guy goes, nobody's perfect. <laughs> it's that, amazing. That sounds like a good ending. Uh, uh, American Graffiti. This uh, is probably going to get a remake. I guarantee it. Probably. So, it's amazing. It's a good movie. 97 is not bad. Without this movie, we don't get Star Wars. Right, this without, is what put George Lucas on the map before Star Wars. And the help of, I think, one female. 
because she's the one who helped back the shit out of Star Wars when it was no Star Trek. Never mind. Oh yeah, Star Trek. Uh, you're thinking Lucio Ball. Lucio Ball yeah, actually was. That's it, it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, American Graffiti. I think it's special. It has its place. Um. I enjoy it. It's been a very long time. I should sit down and watch it again. I'm down to do that. Uh, Dumbo. Eh, I understand why Walt made it. I didn't understand why we why we remade it. I didn't think the remake was needed. I didn't watch it. Poor Jack Black. Um, Twelve Angry Men uh, is amazing, and I think it deserves to be up here. Okay. Um, Maltese Falcon. Oh, that one's Another great. Another Bogart. Bogart is... I, I would say Bogart is one of the benefactos. If anyone were to take his place, I would say it's more toward maybe early Christian Bale, like American Psycho-ish. Okay. Uh, maybe... Maybe an early John... Hmm, no, I can't Robert go. Downey Jr. after the comeback. Robert Downey Jr. after the comeback, but he's gotta he's gotta like make sure he looks refined. Like I haven't seen him do like a full suit and tie in a while, in a long minute. Like he he does the more relaxed thing because it yeah. kind of suits him. But I would like to see him do the suit and tie serious role. Pierce Brosnan back in his day. Uh, I don't know. After seeing him in Mamma Mia. Okay, I'll give you that. Yeah, I've he should. I I love Brosnan. They I, never should have made him sing neutral like as said mamma mia is not bad he came but back for the he... sequel he... uh, bras has got good roles though i mean back to the back to the list back to the list uh ratatouille it was okay it was okay um i i like pixar movies i just don't stay up to date on them um really gravity is a 96 percent must see really i didn't see gravity and from my understanding the entire movie wouldn't happen hey. Yeah, the entire movie wouldn't happen if they just followed the rules of how gravity actually works and how space works. Bay. I, I've seen the scene where they're drifting apart and the thing breaks in space. They would go, boing, and then start going back towards each other. So the whole movie wouldn't actually happen the way it it's happens, yeah. depicted. Uh, Spread it away. I haven't seen it. I haven't oh. seen pretty much any Studio Ghibli. Quincy. Yeah. We gotta get you into this. The, if you're having me watch all these movies, I need you to start watching. Lauren bought Grave of the Fireflies so that I can watch that one. Be prepared. Be Come with a box prepared. of tissues. Be prepared. No, go in with a box of tissues. Guaranteed. I've only almost cried at two movies. I don't give a time. damn. <laughs> okay. Quincy, if you get invested like I did, I was bawling. Okay. Okay. Uh, Fantasia's up there, but eh, Fantasia's hey. okay. Uh, Beauty and the Beast OG. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I like it, but I mean, the, it's better than the remake by tenfold. I didn't hate the remake. I hated it. I literally. Hated what, it. Did I think it was unneeded? Yes, but I don't. I, I don't know. You don't get some of the full, the sets were made well. And... You don't get some of the full energy that the Beast had in some of the scenes. It's because he's a CGI fucking monstrosity. You're right, but I'm still mad at it. Uh, Toy Story being up here, so OG. Toy Story getting a good review, I have no problems with. But the way this list is set, they were setting like must watches, and I don't understand why Toy Story is at forty seven. Um, Social Network was actually one I really liked at, uh, back when it first came out. I watched it several times. Now I don't really care if I ever watch that movie again. I just yeah, but Facebook is already it, it was good for the first time. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, My Fair Lady is a pretty good one. OG Snow White. Back in 1938. It was the uh, first animated feature-length film. Are you sure it wasn't Sleeping Beauty? Mm-hmm. It was Snow White. Oh, neat. Uh, I heard uh, Zero Dark Thirty is a big one. It's a good one. I liked it. Um, Wally's up there. I think Wally's important, so I get that. Wally's cute. Come on. Um, oh, wait. Oh, taxi. Go back, go back up. Uh, the man. Who, okay. Never mind. Uh, Taxi Driver. Uh, Taxi Driver definitely deserves uh, its praises. Oh, um, yes, it does. It's an amazing movie, and with the way it ends, and you're not entirely sure what's going on, I I like Taxi Driver. I like Taxi Driver. Uh, it's good. Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction, yeah. Uh, belongs where it is. Uh, Hurt Locker, I've heard a lot of good about. I liked it. I like Jeremy Renner, so I was never against it. I just never got around to watching it. Uh, I liked it a lot. It was something to really behold, because that is how an actual uh, bomb squad actually handled things and it could actually cause a lot of mental distress i have not seen inside out uh everyone crawls up the inside of my ass to fucking tell me about how much i need to see inside out neutral 
Schindler's List. Uh, oh, yeah, that deserves to be up there. Sure. I wish it was a little higher, actually. Yeah, the fact that Toy Story, it's according higher. to this list, is more important than Schindler's List is very interesting to me. Yeah, same. Uh, Apocalypse uh, Now. Apocalypse Now is good. good one. It's a good place. Um, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I mean, Return of the King, sure. I would prefer, like, Two Towers, but that's just me. That's just me being Well, snarky. it's not Fellowship. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that one. <laughs> like, Twin Towers had the greatest fight scene. Two ever. Towers. Huh? Two Towers. Two Towers. You said Twin. I did. <laughs> But uh, even so, that one had the greatest entire embossed fight scene with Corey. With, oh my god, it was so good. Yeah. Um. Uh, I'm gonna stop at like a hundred. Yeah, I figured we'd go to a hundred. Uh, Cartoon Tiger, Hidden Dragons up there. That one's pretty good. That's one of those ones where it's like I'll watch it despite the subtitles. A duck soup is amazing. Um, Marx Brothers. Oh, I haven't seen very much of that. Uh, that that uh, one's good. La La Land. I heard everyone sucked the shit out of this movie's dick. I didn't see it. I also heard everyone sucked its dick, but whatever, man. There will be blood. Okay, this one's good. That one's a good one. <laughs> I drink your milkshake. <laughs> All right, but that's 100. We yeah, couldn't find uh, any other number ones Number 100 is Badlands. I've heard about, yeah. So, Well, no, there's some on here that I'm just like, meh. Yeah. But um, neutral. Now, my problem is, so we just went through this list. Okay. How many of these movies do you think got Oscars? Not all. Probably like most of them, though. Probably, but I would say, on spectrum, maybe sixty percent, sixty five percent tops. So the, oh, this is kind of what I brings it back to: movies that are getting one hundred percent are movies that are made for Oscars. Okay. I'm not saying an Adam Sandler movie needs to be at one hundred percent. Okay. My point is, is just because it's not made for the Oscars doesn't mean it can't be at one hundred percent. It gets different things. You're right. There's different levels to rate movies on. And what Justin was just smirking about is that we went on for an hour and just haven't a, really just, touched the news. Just about an hour. But then again, it's good discussion. Yeah. I mean... That was like I, had, I said a couple episodes back, this was not originally supposed to be just a news yeah. podcast. It was just kind of what we fell into. Yeah. And I, I thought it was only a half hour, to be 100% honest. But... Yeah, it's more at 51. Oopsie doopsie. <laughs> um, uh, so the other movie tonight is Adventures of Babysitting. Yeah, this one you, you high praised, and I was like, okay. Don't take the movie serious. Don't take the movie serious. It's funny. And, I mean, it's not getting bad up on the, no, the Metacritic or otherwise. It's because of her. Everybody loves Elizabeth Shue. <laughs> you, yeah, okay. Um, but basically, she has a babysitting job, and shit kind of goes haywire. And I'm excited to see it. And this is from 87, so it's yep. a part of the 80s uh, theme. Chris Columbus directed it. Okay. Uh, now let's move into our news. Now let's move into our news. Where are we starting? Now you can start with your PlayStation stuff, because I know that we don't have much on that. So yeah. So let's just get uh, out of the way. Boy, oh boy, does Sony enjoy doing their state of plays when they don't have a lot to really push out. Like, they push out a few okay indie scenes, but nothing that really nothing that really drew in anyone. Uh, they plugged the game uh, Wadham, which is made by the guys who did um, Katamari Damacy. And I love Katamari Damacy. This was one of the only two games out of that entire thing that I was just like, oh, I didn't know he was doing something. Uh, so I was like, good, I'm glad that, you know, there's going to be another, you know, uh, guy singing in the background going, da, 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 It's a bunch of weird colored shapes doing things. Yeah, and it's supposed to be a really strange, colorful experience that's, you know, a little crazier than you'd imagine. So I'm super, I'm super excited to see what this is actually fully about, but they didn't showcase too much. It showcased a big giant body circle that was its mouth and then eyes on the top and i was just like that's weird but what is it is it a puzzle is it a walk around game like i, I need to know i need to know something a little something because with katamari you know what you're doing as soon as you drop in you drop in and make a big ball make big ball pick up shit pick up shit big ball uh the other one would be last of us 2 which got a Finally, some fucking information. Uh, so, it's coming out uh, February 21st, 2020. Yep. Uh, Joel is back, confirmed. I'm wondering for how long, though. I, I'm going to say probably for the second half of the game. Because from the, the trailer that they showcased, it was all her. Now, do you think it's going to be, it's all her, second half of the game, he comes in, game ends with him dying? I would sincerely hope not. I think that's what they're going to do. I don't want Joel to die. They have avoided showing us Joel so much. I have a feeling he's not alive in the game very long. Uh, don't do this, Quincy. Even the first cinematic trailer, we just hear him walk up and say something. They yeah, don't show uh, him. You okay, kid? Yeah. I'm going to make sure each and every one of these motherfuckers don't die. 
I mean, I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna hold my hopes high, but even still, I don't think I'm gonna get this one at launch. I'm gonna let it go for a little bit, wait till it drops in price. So it's coming out with a console. Uh, no, this. Yeah. No. Uh, Death Stranding. Is. Oh, Death Stranding is a console. Sorry. Yeah. Death Stranding um, comes out with that one. Well, before we get into that, then, uh, I have a few thoughts on Last of Us Part Two. Um, <laughs> it took you way too fucking long to give us a goddamn fucking release date. Uh, if the game wasn't ready, that's fine, but maybe not start showing us trailers when your game's not ready. Or at least when it's not that far off. E- E3 does that, where they'll say coming soon, or... or like... And then four years later, you get a game? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't been four years for last, but, well, how long has it been since the first one came out? It's probably been close to seven years. Yeah, it's been it's been a while. We And we just got freaking Last of Us uh, remastered on the fucking which PS4. isn't even fucking needed and i'm like i already have it what the fuck uh, don't don't give me something i already have give me something new like yeah. you the funny thing is with game pass over on fucking xbox i get something new as soon as it comes out don't fuck with me playstation i i like your console not enough however to keep myself there now here's my thing here's my other thing with uh last of us too is that it's a zombie game Wait. Wait a minute, is it not a zombie game? Because here's a trailer, no zombies. Here's a bunch of gameplay, no zombies. What new happened trailer. to the zombies? And then the new trailer comes out and you get uh, the first instance of a clicker. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay, And that's we cool. see a new type of one, too. Yeah, so I mean... So it's like, okay, it is zombies, but why did you bury the zombie lead for however many months between those two trailers and however many months from the other trailer to this current trailer? Eight months? Bury the fucking zombie thing, bury fucking Joel, like... Holy shit, Naughty Dog, or PlayStation, whoever it is, show us some fucking shit so I know whether or not I'm even going to buy the fucking game. I mean, there were some that were already like, as soon as they saw the uh, the first trailer, the one where it had no fighting at all, uh, when they saw that, they were like, ooh, ooh, she got a girlfriend, ooh, and they were already they were already set with that. And I was like, <laughs> She what? plays guitar in a cutscene, so I'm going to spend 60 fucking dollars. Wait, what? I mean, yeah, don't see why not. Plus, Do this it. is also the same thing that made everyone stand up at its E3, walk into a different room, sit down, watch a man play acoustic guitar, get back up, walk back into the previous room, sit down, and then get to talk about the game. Yeah. I'm already, so, all right, whatever. But even moving still, on. Moving on from that, uh, they showcased more Modern Warfare stuff. They showcased a little bit more Death Stranding and a limited console uh, that has uh, a BB styled controller where it's like this uh, yellow see through the thing that you like. I think no, I like. I know I like it, but I don't know if you like the see through. I don't mind it. Um, I liked it when it was the green Beans. from N sixty four. Okay, so you like the Nintendo set, but even still, this one kind of looks like the BB, and I'm like, okay, you get your little thumbs up, and then the console has the the handprints from the first fucking trailer. Uh, it says Death Stranding, and it says Death on Stranding on the like gold. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it looks it looks, nice. it, it looks good. Now, here's my problem. Fancy new console. Come buy this for, what, $450? It's a pro, so uh, I think it's for, it'll be 400 plus whatever the cost of the limited is, so it'll probably be 450 So, yeah. Okay. Come buy this for 450 It'll be obsolete by next year. It's by a, this time next year, because the new PlayStation will be out yeah. in time for Christmas next year. Disgusting. Uh, the other indie one that did not catch my attention at all is Humanity, where it's tower defense. I don't know, man. I it's honestly, not even tower defense. It was people running. It's, it's a lot of people it's walking people around. people running, and you have to make sure that they, they get, can get where they need to go. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I live enough. Uh, they announced a medieval short-lived demo, and I'm like, oh, I like medieval, but that what? would require me to buy PlayStation Plus again in order to download it. You can't get demos without PlayStation Plus? What the fuck? What the fuck? At this point, I might as well just sell my fucking console, and I have a limited edition one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, what's cool about the demo, though, is if you do download it, you get a free character for when the game comes out. A hat. Oh, a free hat? You get a hat. I thought they said character. No, you get a hat. That's not nearly as cool. Oh, I do want to talk about the Call of Duty thing, though. Okay, hit me with it, because, I mean... Modern Warfare is back! Yeah. It's coming to all consoles. It's coming to PC. It's got this DLC called Survival, I do believe, Mm -hmm. that'll be available on PlayStation only until October 1st, 2020. Okay. So for the next year, if you buy it on PlayStation, you can play this DLC. Everyone else, 
sit on your fucking hands. I don't know. I, I personally, I don't think I would play the survival mode or whatever the fuck. I, I think I'm just going to sit on the story and call it a day. I'm so. not even going to buy it, but... Yeah, if, I, if, if it was offered to me, I'd take it. Um, another thing, uh, Civ Six is coming to the PS4. I'm happy to see Civ all over the place, even yeah. though I, I can't play it. I, I played I, one of them. It's pretty, they're fun. I, I panic too much with how foreign affairs happen, so it's not my cup um other than that that was i believe everything like those were the big ones there were some smaller things in the middle sony's you know secretly sucking the soul out of gaming yeah uh we can close that we don't need it now yeah we don't need that either um but up up shoe news i don't even understand why you picked that noise to go with shoe news then pick another one i know you keep telling me that i'm just still trying to figure out i don't know until until you pick another one it stays talk about shoe news all right. I'm going to go to sleep. All right. So everyone knows that we find these interesting comic book or video game or anime or otherwise shoes. This one takes from the comic book. Uh, it's Batman. Yep. We or have Batman Day. 80th anniversary. That's a that's a big birthday. That's <laughs> It is a big birthday. It's a big birthday. Uh, and so uh, Converse and Batman decided to do a pretty good handshake. And hey, Converse has worked with DC before too. Y- yeah, so. uh, but these look really nice. Like I would wear them. I'd wear this one. I would honestly wear all four pairs. Yeah, sure. So you've got two high tops. Uh, one of which is a nice big classic Batman and Robin kind of running towards you with the bat signal in the background. The other one is some comic pages where it looks like. I'm not entirely sure what he's fighting in that. It looks like Riddler getting split into like a million pieces. I don't know what the fuck it is. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, oh there's a couple more actually. Oh, these are female. Okay. Yeah, they've oh, got. Is that Batgirl? No, it says Batman. But they've got a few more uh, high tops. Oh, oh, it's uh Robin getting covered in some green. Oh, goo. coming from uh the Penguin's umbrella. Okay, so it's like a noxious gas or something. You're um, a noxious gas. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, there we There's go. There's a nice zoom in. So, yeah, that's what it is. Um, and then they've got two... Okay, well, these ones are called high tops. What are the other ones called? Not high tops? <laughs> Short Not high tops? Top. No. I don't buy Converse. Yeah, I don't know. Um, chucks? chucks? I don't know. Yeah, are they all Chucks? Chuck the Taylor. Shoe guys are going to yeah, come for Yeah, they're all Chuck Taylors. Shoe guys are going to come for us. I don't fucking... You won't fight. I'll fucking rack ya. Swear on me, mum. Right in the bracket. Right in the roll uh, what are we looking at on price? Do we know? Uh, I was thought this was gonna lead me there, but I guess not. It's a um, broken link. It's a well, it's a link that takes you to their website. But it does. They don't come out till October twenty first, so they may not be doing a price yet. They may be waiting till they're actually available. Uh, Chuck seventy highs. Uh, da da da. da. Hmm. Yeah, nothing on price. That's all good. Uh, they're very nice. They're um, very very nice. I'm gonna check them out. And he's gonna sneeze. I'm not. No, oh, he's not gonna sneeze. I'm not gonna sneeze. All right, um, but yeah, we want, we want a little shoe news for you guys, we, so we went and found something. Yeah, so if you want to find it, it's on Sneaker News of uh, uh, September 25th, so it's not, it was literally yesterday, so have fun with that. Uh, Final Fantasy Seven got a little bit more. Uh, Final Fantasy Seven Remake. Remake, yes. Uh, I, I'm excited for this one. This one I'm actually hyped for. Okay. Like I, I haven't been hyped for a game in a little while. I like the way the redesigns 3. look. Huh? I like the way the redesigns look a I like, lot. I like it a lot too. Um, when Barrett speaks in Japanese, it makes you feel really like he's supposed to be very overbearing and like short with people, and it, he comes off like that. I'm like, good, good. The the voice actors did very well at giving the actors emo or the characters emotion that they're supposed to emulate. But the box art was released, and it pays homage to the OG, and it looks good. Him looking up at Shinra Corporation, like, I'm going to do something. An insanely big sword. Uh, his buster sword, yes. That would totally wreck your shoulder the instant you try to pick it up. He's he's a super soldier. Fuck you. That's all right. All right. Tendons are tendons. Yeah, well. <laughs> like, um, so, name the last Bandai Namco game you played. Galaga. Galaga? That was yeah. last one, yeah? I have Galaga on my phone, so yeah. Oh, okay. For me, it would probably be Dark Souls 3. Galaga. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, Galaga would be back there somewhere along those lines. <laughs> but there's a bit of a controversy right now. 
Yes. Uh, well, they, not controversy. They're suing someone. They're suing someone, <laughs> and I, I find it to be a little petty. When I when I glanced at this thing, I was like, it's a little petty. Well, like if say you create something. Okay. Create something for me really quick. Okay. Bam! It's created. Okay. That's really cool. Okay. Make money off that. Uh, uh yeah. I okay. Do. I'm gonna make the exact same thing, without your permission. Now. And I'm gonna that. make money off of it. I get that. But that's why I think that they should have just done, like, if they had, even if they still did it without their permission, this is still a really good idea that can earn them both revenue. Now, the problem with it was, so it's, Ben and Amco is uh, suing At Games, the makers of the plug-and-play retro game consoles, uh, alleging that At Games' production of an unauthorized Miss Pac-Man mini cabinet ruined negotiations with the game's original developer that would resolve an ownership issue going back to 1983. That's a long time ago. So I understand that. They could have sent a cease and desist, don't make this anymore, you fuckers, because you're making money off of our thing. Yeah. But now hearing that it ruined negotiations to finally settle a fucking thing that's been going on for fucking 20 years. 20? Well, I figure Bandai didn't own it until later in, right? Oh, you're right. They didn't own it from day one. You're right, you're right. Let's take it back to the end of the 90s. You're right. I'll give you 90s. I'll give you 90s. So, you know, I kind of get it. Like, you fucking just wrecked everything. Because you decided to go through and try to do something behind our backs and think we wouldn't notice, that no one would notice you were making this mini cabinet. The other thing is, stop making mini cabinets. Bitch, I want a full-size cabinet. <laughs> I, want, I want a big boy. Can we get a big boy right there? I would love that. We would never get anything done. We would never. And it would have to. I would have to mod the, the board so that way we can get some more games on that. I would totally still make it take quarters, though. <laughs> or at least... uh uh tokens tokens thank you i kept coupons kept popping in my head i'm like that's not right that's no that's (laughs) not good so i don't know i'm kind of on bandai's side Hmm. and by the way i used to think it was pronounced bandy oh lauren corrected me on that uh what is this um this looks weird metro 23 2033 redux is available for free on uh, epic game store oh okay i saw a photo of fish so i didn't know what was going on yeah and then everything which is like a uh wander Type oh, that's the fish. Yeah. Um, you did just make me think of something, though. That's frustrating. Do you remember Medal of Honor? Yeah. Uh, I played one on your console not too long did ago. Did you like Medal of Honor? Uh, yeah. No. Would you like it if I told you there was a new Medal of Honor game coming? Um, The last one wasn't too great, but I mean, it was, it was still a good story, so maybe... Medal of Honor, Above and Beyond, for 2020. Okay. Oculus Rift only. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. You know you sound like Charlie Brown when you scream like that? Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> this is where I get a little confused. This is where I have an actual problem with this. I don't have VR. I don't mind VR. I don't want to purchase VR for a specific game. I just want to enjoy the games that you're making, but don't make me have something that I don't have or don't want at this point in time. Now, do I want one later? Sure. Now, I wouldn't mind one. But here's my thing. I own a VR. I went with the cheap one, buying the PlayStation VR. That's okay. the cheapest of the the big three: HTC, Oculus, and PlayStation. Most of what is available out there can be played on HTC. Um, a good chunk of it can be played on PlayStation. But you've got companies like PlayStation and Oculus and HTC that keep making exclusives for their fucking thing to try to get you to buy their sixteen hundred dollar fucking setup. No one has that shit. That's my thing. You're right. You are absolutely right. So, uh, yeah, Medal of Honor, Above and Beyond, 2020, Oculus Rift. I, I don't know what else to say. <sighs> Suck my ass. Um, That's what I say. Suck my fucking ass. Do you want to go into this one next? Sure. Um, so, have you ever eaten asbestos? Um, you're thinking of the wrong thing again. Asbestos is what you, we used to use, use for an I know. insulation. I, it doesn't change what I'm asking, though. No, I've never eaten asbestos. Okay. But would you would you be technically eating asbestos if you put this on? No, no. because asbestos is not mold. Oh. This is mold. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this would basically be like eating penicillin, except that it kills you. Although penicillin can kill me, so... So it would be like eating Yeah, this. so it would be like eating so penicillin So what happened is, Fallout 76 helmet... 
was released and it got it was sold through GameStop. Twenty thousand units. Twenty thousand units. And only thirty two were sold through GameStop. Every recalled helmet sold was defined as the Fallout One One Power Armor Nuka Cola helmet, which has a red painted finish with white colored interior tubing around the sides. But it's got mold. They're saying the fabric in the helmet is possibly can- carrying mold, and they want everyone to send them back. They will give you refunds. And the um, company ended up giving customers a $5 coupon for in-game currency. Boy. Well, now here's the thing. So that's what Bethesda is doing, right? They're giving the $5 coupon. Bethesda didn't make this helmet. Yeah. So you can't hold it against Bethesda for the helmet. Um, I actually have the company so the- right here. Let me see. Um. Chronicle Collectibles is the one that made the helmet and sold it online uh, by GameStop. Jesus. So you can't blame Bethesda for it. Um, the fact that Bethesda is willing to give you $5 in credit was rather nice of them, I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you have this helmet that you think looked really cool, it may be making you sick. That's about all I can say. Um, we discussed that it looked really cool. We would want to put it in the glass box, but it's not really worth risking your life. You may just need to turn your helmet over. Can I, Sorry, just scale, can I just scale the inside of it? I don't know. They said it's the fabric, so I don't know what the inside of this helmet's like. I would scale the whole fabric part. I, I, didn't, shit. I didn't experience this helmet. Probably a good thing, because I'm not dead now. You yeah, I know, right? Um, uh, this TK Helmet is an asbestos in natural. Asbestos is what we were using for clothing and inside of walls and stuff. That's the joke. I was just making sure. You were talking about eating asbestos. It's not mold. I know it's not. Fine. Fine. Asbestos causes cancer. Yes. Um, yeah, we can talk about this next. So, we talked a little bit about the fairy tale RPG a little bit ago. Uh, now it's talking that it's a 30 hour for the main story and it has a lot of side content. That's good. I still need to dig into the fairy tale anime. So, those of you that have dug in, it's 10 main characters, all of which will get full episodes. And then they're saying the minor characters will still get some episodes and everyone's getting costume ch- costume changes. Cool. So 30 I'm, hours of just main game. That's pretty damn good for an RPG. I'm cool with that. Like, as I said, I just, I got to get into it. That one and finish up uh, Seven Deadly Sins. Those are my two that I got to do. Those, those are the ones I said I want to do. Um, Ugh. Now, something we plan to watch on, watch for one of our movie nights eventually is uh, Jurassic World and Jurassic World 2 Fallen Kingdom because you haven't seen either one of those. Correct. I've seen one, two, and three. Yeah. Um, I've seen one through four. So one Jurassic world, lost world three, I'm sorry, Jurassic park, lost world three and then Jurassic world. I didn't see fallen kingdom yet, but in good news, we may just save it depending on when this movie comes out. Um, they have confirmed that the original three from Jurassic park, uh, that's a uh, Laura Dean, uh, Laura Dern, sorry, uh, Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum will be back for Jurassic world three, which Neat. Has me pretty fucking hyped. Like, yeah, I mean, Goldblum, uh, God. He's You're a- going to watch his new show on Disney Plus? I might. Yeah, The yeah. World According to Jeff Goldblum. Yep. Like, um, there's nothing that man can, like, when he did Hot Ones, he was, God, he's probably one of the top five that I enjoyed on Hot Ones. And up there would be Shaquille O'Neal. Which is going to make a meme face. Because he would take a bite the- and then look at the camera and just, ooh. <laughs> um,. Some more small news things for you. Okay. Uh, Kevin Feige, the one that's running Marvel um, yep. for Disney, yep. right? Yep. Uh, just confirmed he is making a Star Wars movie. Well, he says developing, and I'm not entirely sure what that means. Because he he's developing a Star Wars movie, and that it will feature... Uh, there's rumors it'll feature one of the females from Marvel in it. So, question is, what female actress from Marvel is going to get that role? Mm. I have a feeling it's Captain Marvel. I think um, it's Brie. Brie Larson. Yeah. Larson, right? Larson. Okay. I mean, I don't know. I would want to hear more before I go saying anything. I mean, Feige, Feige's what's kind of kept the Marvel Universe at least understandable. So, yeah, I don't think he'll make any big mistakes. But if he's like planning on directing, I don't think he's ever directed anything. He's only ever been a producer, and that kind of scares me. Mm-hmm. Um... Uh, next, I have. Uh, do you know what the new Warriors are? Uh, something that got canceled. Yes. Okay. So, New Warriors, the Marvel comic. Um, it didn't even necessarily get canceled. Just Freeform said they didn't want to pick it up, and no one else even wants to even look at it. That bums me out. 
Well, what's going to bum me out even more is that um, Hulu just basically did the same thing with Ghost Rider. So we're not getting Ghost Rider? No, nope, he was pitched to Hulu. Hulu turned him down. So for now, we still have the couple episodes he showed up in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but that's it. No Ghost Rider coming. Um, and that, that's, that's pretty upsetting to me because I thought that was a pretty good character to do for a television series. And Hulu's saying that the issue is creative impasse. They reached a creative impasse. That's yeah. that's just big boy talk for I don't want to do it. I don't know. I, I don't get it. Like, there's so much you have at your disposal. This is actually getting really infuriating. Ready to get a little more pissed? Go on. Sony just updated their plans for Marvel movies. Okay. So, we're still going to get Morbius with fucking uh, Jared Leto. Okay. We're still getting Venom 2. No, Eventually, we'll get into... Venom in... hoping does well. Eventually, we'll get into the Spider-Verse 2. We don't know when. Yeah, okay. Where, um, where's, the, where's the bummer? Hit me with the bummer. Spider-Man 3 and 4, because despite not being able to use any of the other Marvel characters, it's somehow going to still be connected because they're using Tom Holland, but it's also somehow going to be connected to Venom. And Sony's going to probably ruin an amazing character because they just announced that they're giving Madam Web her own movie. Madam Web, who, by the way, cannot get out of her chair because she will die. There's going to be a movie about that character. I love Madam Web, and I've been dying for them to put them in the movies for a very long time now. I even have an actress picked out. Um, I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark. This is terrible. I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark. Uh, little local news. Oh. I went to the Haunted Museum that we have out here. Oh yeah, how how'd you how'd you like that? So okay, it was you go and park in a parking lot that wasn't clear was for them. In fact, a guy has to open a gate for you. Um, you then go and stand in a line that wraps around the side of the building. We stood there for we stood outside for probably about an hour. Mm -hmm. It was about eighty something degrees out, so it was a good time for us to go. Um, it's three dollars for a bottle of water while you're standing in line, cash only. Uh, once you get inside, you go inside this little room where you then pay the box office. We got a discount for being locals, so it was only $38 per person. Um, the tour does take about an hour and a half, so at least there's that. It's kind of long. No photos allowed. No videos allowed. No recording of any kind. Uh, no audio recording allowed. For a building that is said to be haunted and is said to be filled with haunted things, you are not allowed to do any ghost hunting. Um... After standing in the lobby for a little bit, a tour guide will come and get you, lead you back outside, talk to you a little bit about the family that about, built the house, and then we'll leave you, lead you inside to the living room. Then from there, you basically check out stuff. They tell you stories about stuff, and you basically go room from room from then on. Each room has a theme. Um, do you know about Dr. Death, the guy that years ago was helping people uh, commit suicide, the ones that were terminally ill and didn't yeah. want to live anymore. Yeah. They have his v Volkswagen van that he was doing it in, and like they have it inside the house and stuff like that. They have a bunch of stuff that they bought from uh, that were owned by like Ted Bundy or um, Dahmer, or a bunch of serial killers, stuff like that. Okay, they got some haunted dolls. They've got like thirty-seven skeletons or something of that nature that are real ones. It's some really cool artifacts, but it does not free roam at any at any point. It is this tour guide taking you to a room, talking about a few things. You have a few seconds to walk around and look at stuff, and then they move you to the next room. Um, I enjoyed it, but considering it was $38 as a local discount, it is far too fucking expensive. Concur. Um, and then the making you wait outside so long. It's a desert. I can handle it, but, but others can't. Yeah. Especially people that are on vacation here. And this is uh, the Zach Baggins Haunted Museum. Uh, he's the guy from Ghost Adventures. So, um, I'm not mad I went and did it, okay. but it was just, it was an interesting, interesting experience. So, if anyone comes to visit Vegas, I mean, you want to do it, it's definitely got some cool shit to look at, but you better set some time off to the side to do it and bring some bottles of water. Also, no food or drinks allowed inside. Uh, they make you spit everything out or throw it away. So, you better finish the bottle of water you bought standing in line before you go into the building. Uh, okay, whatever, man. There's a gift shop at the end. Uh, the prices in the gift shop are actually pretty decent. Coffee mug for like 12 bucks. 
Yeah, things like that. That stuff that would be over at Zia because it was like ten bucks for the one that I wanted over at Zia. Yeah, but I mean, it's you know, it's the Zach Bagans Honda yeah. Museum one. Yeah. No, um, no. The only thing that really concerned me the most out of it is that it's on Charleston and Sixth Street. Downtown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyone that's a Vegas local is like, <laughs> um, the house has about thirty rooms and you get to see most of them. Okay, general admission is forty four. So the local discount is about six bucks. And there's no Groupon. <laughs> um, Jesus Christ! I don't know. I didn't mind it. They had some fun stuff. Yeah, it seems like they would. Yeah, doesn't seem too bad. Um, next I have now. If you owned a Tesla, what would you want them to add to it? Um, let's add a console. You want a console? I want a console. Want to play, play more games than what it can already run. Yeah, because. Doesn't it have that already? It's got that monitor in the center that plays different games, and you can make the horn make fart noises and stuff like that. Uh, they said that Rocket League is now available on it, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, probably, yeah. Um, well, what about you have to go pick someone up, or you have to wait on something, whatever the case may be, and you decide, well, it's not like I'm going to be burning any gas. Might as well throw my seat back, kick my feet up, and watch Netflix on oh, the screen. Oh, that's right. I did, <laughs> I did see something about it. I just didn't pull it up. Tesla just announced that Netflix will be available to watch when parked, of course. <laughs> you can't. It won't run while you're driving. You have to, the car has that to be That kind of bums me out because I would like to hear something. problem is the screen's right next to the driver. Oh. How many people are going to look down and look at that screen and take their eyes off the road and crash? Even with the autopilot. Yeah, I know. I was about to say, <laughs> can you just put the shit on the <laughs> Um, <clears throat> uh, it'll be on the Model S, the Model X, and the Model 3 uh, for their center displays. Cool. I mean, I'm all right with it. Question is, do I have to pay for a data plan? If I have to like pay for a data plan or hook up my phone's like uh, hotspot, yeah, hot then that ain't fucking happening. Those streaming will fucking kill me. Yeah. But if it's something that Tesla's like, yeah, we'll bite the bullet on the streaming, you're good. Then why the uh, fuck yeah, not? Yeah, sure. Like. There's been plenty of times like when I go pick Lauren up from work, I park in the back and I sit there and I just play games on my phone. Now I could watch a fucking episode of something. It's half not a bad episode. idea. Yeah, half an episode of something. Yeah. yeah. I'm finishing an episode that I started when I left the house. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, another thing for you, uh, Landmark Theaters is the only one I've heard of saying this so far. This could change. More theaters could start getting behind it. People are upset, but I'm on the theater side. With Joker coming out real soon, they've announced no Joker cosplays. You can't show up with face paint. You can't show up with a mask of any sort. I concur. And for anyone that's going, what, why? Think back to when Dark three Knight came ago. out. Uh, it was no, a little more than three years ago. ago. Uh, when Dark Knight came out, um, the last time Joker was in a movie. Oh, no, sorry. I forgot Suicide Squad. My bad. Uh, <laughs> 2008, so 2008. 10 years ago. Yeah, 11. 11. Yeah, 11 years ago, um, a man went into a theater. He had dyed his hair and was calling himself the Joker and killed a lot of people. So I'm assuming they're trying to refrain from anyone doing anything like that again um, so that they can turn you away easier. No, well, no cosplays today. Yeah. Please go away. Yeah. Plain, done, and simple. Um, it was 2012. Was it 2012? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I think the movie came out late 2011, so I guess that makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, okay. It was at a showing of Dark Knight. Yeah. That's all I know. Um, Some happier news. No, it was Dark Knight Rises. That's why it was so late, because it was 2008 that it was released. Oh, that's confusing, because Dark Knight Rises doesn't even have a fucking Joker in it. Yeah, he just popped up there. Okay. But I, I was like, I want to say it was later than that. Okay, yeah, so 2012. So, yeah, it was only seven years ago then. Yeah. Um, And some better news. We're not entirely sure, but I was cruising around looking at games on my computer last night. And the Outer Worlds is marked as included with Game Pass. Um, Outer Worlds is one we've been excited for for a while. And I just don't know if it's going to be part of just PC's Game Pass or if it's going to be console's Game Pass as well. I'm assuming it'll be console's Game Pass. I'm hoping it is. I mean, you can play it on PC if it, if it doesn't. I yeah, can't. you're right. I don't have the game on PC. Yeah, you're right. I mean, all I need is just the cables. Okay, but I mean... Or I could just play it for free downstairs if they just put it on console Game Pass. You're right. So. And me too. Um, so I'd rather play. I'd rather play that on console, to be honest. 
It feels like a very console game. It does. Uh, it's an RPG, so it probably wouldn't do bad on on PC. Mixed feelings. So, um, And the last thing I really have um, is a new Mario Kart game called Mario Kart Tour came out for the phone. I've played about seven levels on it. It's okay. It's not bad. Um, you can definitely earn the in-game currency, so it's not nearly as much of a you better fucking pay us like Mario Run was. Um, Mario Run, you only got to play a couple levels, and then after that, you had to buy a ridiculously expensive expansion pack type of thing. Okay. Um, Dr. Mario luckily didn't do that, um, but did make it to where you can't earn any of the things that would make it to where you could boost yourself in the level. You could only buy them. It looks like with Mario Kart Tour, they've kind of taken all that out. There's really only one thing I've found where you'd have to pay, and they offer a four ninety nine a month membership where you get shit throughout. Um, it's fun. When I first wrote up my notes, they are at ten point one million downloads in one day. Um, I just got a notification that there are over twenty million downloads for the first day. So people are liking it. It's, okay. Yep. Um, you can still connect with your Nintendo account and find all your friends too. Oh, okay. Good, good for Nintendo. They're doing really good on mobile games right now. You guys have phones, don't you? <laughs> Looks over at Blizzard. You shut up, Blizzard. You don't get to. You don't get to. Which reminds me, there's an Activision slash Blizzard, mostly just Activision, sale going on on Xbox right now. <gasps> Sadly, the majority of it is just fucking Call of Duty. <laughs> it's like almost all Call of Duty shit. But there's a few decent things in there. So anyone that wanted to look at that, go ahead and check it out. There's Activision's done things other than Call of Duty, despite what they seem to forget. Um, are you pulling up Humble Hum Bundle? Hum 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 Bundle. Hum Bundle. Hum Bundle. Yeah, they're uh, they had something. Um, okay. there it is, the Square Enix sale. Oh, okay. Like, there's a lot of Square Enix sale going on on uh, Humble Bundle. Uh, you can get Final Fantasy twelve for thirty, which I find to be fair. Um, Star Ocean: the Last Hope, the higher up version of it uh, for ten fifty. Like, there's a lot of good deals going on. And remember, it's hum Humble Bundle, so it's charity. Yes. You can get, uh, with games on the store, it gives some to charity. Yeah, it's a smaller percentage, yeah. but I mean, but if you're going to buy the game, I mean, why not yeah. buy it through here? You're you know, right. It's on sale and it gives a charity? Go for it. Uh, as for the bundles themselves, those you can give 100% to charity. Uh, right now there's a Unity Asset Bundle. Um, I recommend it if you want to get into uh, actually doing some like actual painting or otherwise because Unity is now a very strong player. Like This is a screenshot from yeah. someone, something someone made in Unity. It's good so, for game development. It's good for just art. Art, yeah. Like, um, it's it's good for uh, I've structuring. I've played around with basic Unity. It's actually very understandable. Yeah. And, and I'm uh, stupid. So. They even help out for Unity plugins for mobiles, so that way you can help out build games for mobile. Yep. So I'm like, this um, gets you set up. And the only downside, the tiers are pretty good, honestly. Yeah, the upside, fifteen bucks for everything. Yeah. And all of it can go to charity. I always pay extra when yeah. I buy something from Humble Bundle. Um, I bought a bunch of graphic audio books, and I think it was like twenty five to unlock everything. I think I threw them forty. I know it's not a lot. No. But, but it's still helpful to the charity. Yeah. Um, my favorite to give to is either Project Water or Doctors Without Borders. The the when I did the graphic audio thing, it was a set charity. It wasn't a. It wasn't like um, pick the charity. Mm -hmm. This one was directly going to go to a specific thing, which I think was like a reading thing at the time. So I didn't mind. It's good to keep kids reading. Yeah, uh, same thing. There's a builder bundle that has a lot of building style games. One that I think you'd like, and it's only a dollar. Concrete, Concrete Jungle. Concrete Jungle. Interesting. Uh, another one, Tricky Towers, is a nice little uh, player versus player Tetris style, but it has physics. So when you put a block down, it has weight to either one side or another, or it helps. I've played something similar on my phone. It was fun for a little bit. I got bored. Uh, Portal Knights is another pretty good one. Uh, bridge construction is kind of like a get them from point A to point B. It's on a course. Game Pass now. Oh, okay. Uh, and then Speedrunners from Hell. Eh, it's it's a running. I don't understand the builders portion of it unless you can build your own maps now. But even still, I wouldn't hold it there. And then fucking Staxel for ten bucks. Staxel, a v very wholesome game. Like you can steal from the the shops and they'll just be like, can you can you not? And they'll be like. Okay, I'm sorry. Can, can you not? Okay, you know what? Fuck you, I'm doing it again. <laughs> yeah, they, it, it's... I mean, back then it was a wholesome. And I need to sign into my fucking... Ugh. 
What are you saying in your humble bundle? Uh, I'm trying to just to showcase how much I've supported. Ah, okay, never mind. I got, I got something. I got. I, it. I, I don't do the monthly, so I haven't supported nearly as much as you. Yeah. But, you know. Hang on, let me. I like to. I don't buy too many games on PC. Gamu. So it's more I look out for when they're doing audiobooks or ebooks or, or comics. Comics. They they had the boys up there not too long ago. Yeah, I saw that one. I just didn't, I didn't have the money to put together for it at the time. There you go. You're in now. There I go. Um, purchases. Are you ready to see how much I've donated to charity? <laughs> and this is one of the good things about if you guys do decide to uh, click his hum bundle referral link at the bottom, um, it keeps him buying stupid amounts of shit. Yeah, <laughs> which uh, helps out charities. Now all of these uh, are twelve dollars, so just think of them as twelve dollars. Okay. Well, let me uh, do me a favor. Just scroll up to where the uh, scroll up to where you just barely cover where it says product. Okay. Let's see. Two, four, six, eight, nine. About about nine to ten things per scroll. Okay. Eleven pages worth. So we'll say twenty. Um, and here's this one for 18 yeah so you have 18 purchases in there or three dollar purchases in there or 20 dollar purchases in there you probably donated well, let me see a vast majority and also this was completely at a charity for 35 for the yogs cast jingle jam they have that every year where every single day something new comes out if you'd only spent 12 on each thing you're roughly around two thousand six hundred and forty dollars to charity not counting the fact that you have done way more than that on certain things there's a 26 purchase there there's a 26 purchase there there's a 35 purchase there yep so i have good amount. I, I i like what humble bundles did way back when like where's my first purchase let's go back to my very first purchase you broke it <laughs> 2012 i've been it was a dollar the, yeah for a dollar <laughs> yeah it was the first indie indie bundle and i was like i don't trust it question mark eh, i'll give it a shot and i bought it and i was like oh okay cool uh and then later like literally less than a year later they had the tripwire one which had um killing floor killing floor one and i was like okay for three dollars off whatever man like it's they've always treated us with a little bit more respect yeah and i, I like i like humble bundle for that um, I'm hoping that somewhere soon we get another Humble Bundle Indie Bundle because, like, I, I've i supported them so much that I've bought them multiple times. Gotcha. Because I wanted to just say, this game's awesome. Throw it at someone. <laughs> Throw a knife at them. Well, yeah, because you just get the code because it's DRM. Yeah, and then, I, I mean, I can just download them straight out. Like, if I go to my... DRM is the right word for that, right? Yeah, okay. it's, it's locked to Steam. Steam is DRM. But if I go to my library... I can download these right here on this computer right now. Yeah. Like. Well, I, I can do the same thing. I can open up my hum, hum bundle and I can download my graphics audio books right to this one. Like it's not Disney had a big fucking list for their Disney Plus. Fuck you. A little different. Disney Plus is kick back and not have to do anything. This is kick back and lean back forward because now you get to play the game. <laughs> You're right. But like there's a lot of games that are just DRM free that I could just download on any computer that I can sign into. And I like that. Yeah. Like you, you don't get that with very many things. I can still do it of course with steam, but steam prefers you to kind of stick with your own computer. Which, yeah. Uh, fine and fair. I get it. You know, if everyone just shared the same copy of the game, no one would make any money. Yeah. But then again, if they're just doing it because there's an, like an old game, but at the same time, it's like, what are you going to do? Just, you know, here, here, go take your game. It's fine. It's all going to charity anyways. They don't yeah. mind it. So, I like it. I love it. Kentucky Route Zero, one of my favorite games of all time. You just remind me of the dating simulator. Oh, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> if you go to Up, Up, Down, Down, which is uh, WWE's um, video gaming with Austin Creed, uh, he plays through that game. Does he really? Mm-hmm. Um, Kelly Fleck is on here. It's already getting memes made about it. Mm. But uh, we're, we're kind of just looking through your library now. So. Yeah, like look at all that. Like that's all just for Killing Floor. Yeah, you buy too much shit. I, know. I, I do buy way too. That's right. I buy too much shit too. And then fucking King of Fighters their deal. So I was wondering if you had any suggestions for movies for next week. Anything you've been looking forward to? I would to say let's think about. I'd say let's keep it on the low low. Let's keep it on the low low so that way we got it to where 
it'll come. It'll come to us. Okay. I'm sure we'll figure something. It's just, as of right now, I don't have much in my noggin. I didn't sleep well last night, so that's why. Is I'm there not... ever really much in your noggin? No, I guess you're right. D- just asking. Yeah. Well. Uh, <laughs> now, um, we're pretty much spent on news for this week because, mm-hmm. let's be honest, they didn't really tell us much when it came to PlayStation that we didn't already know. Yeah, and oh, ooh. And uh, th- there just wasn't a lot. There wasn't a lot this week. I, we had a lot of small things. We had a lot of small things, but not a lot of like major things that we were super hype or excited about. Um, so, I mean, I'm good if you're good. Yeah, we told you where to go check out the sales. We told you where to go check out uh, the, the games we're liking and stuff like that. The movies we like, we told you this week. Um, if there's anything you guys think of that you would like to hear from us next week, shoot us a tweet. Um Send us an email. Uh, keep the reviews coming. We did get a five star review on Apple. Um, sadly, they didn't write a review, so I don't have a name to thank them. They did just give us the stars, though. Thank you. So, thank you, mystery reviewer. Um, we very much appreciate that. Uh, and please give it to us on any platform you listen to this on. And if there's a platform we're not on, please let us know. Mm-hmm. Um, I did want to get us set up on Pod Chaser because then we can start looking a little bit more into helping us reach the audience a little bit better and the audience reach us with reviews that would be good um as always check out the description and you'll see where you can get our twitter you can see our email um you can see our tumblr we're dropping the tumblr in there now right yep yep, yep, yep. uh and you just start doing a little bit more on it (laughs) yeah and you can also check out uh tokyo treat if you want a good loop boxy type of thing that you can get with uh yummy delicious um Japanese different kinds of treats. It's not always candy. Some sometimes it's like snack foods and stuff like that. So don't think if you're not a sweet person, don't worry. It's more than just sweets. Um, also check out his humble bundle to keep both him and the charities flowing. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Yes. Discord's gonna stop their gaming service. <laughs>